so I've just decided to hang around camp today because it's just um, it's a wet miserable day uh, it's actually just started snowing out there but I think this will be our fifth night wild camping so we've pretty much run out of um, drinking water so we've just been getting it from the lake um, and just boiling it up which brings me on to the, uh, the Pathfinder bush pot which I wanted to show you I bought this uh, just a few weeks ago actually I got it for backpacking um, for me and Tris if we want to kind of have a stew or a curry or a soup it's a good, it's a good size pot um, I've got a number of the zebra pots but to be honest I'm not really that impressed with them for a number of reasons um, if I try and compare the zebra pots with, with this one uh, the 16 centimeter zebra pot is probably about the same size but um, the lid doesn't stay on it so it, you, you need to kind of fashion some kind of uh, metal clip to keep the lid on whereas this the lid fits in and also on the zebra pots you don't get a, a pouring lip but uh, on the Pathfinder if you can see that there it has a, a spout so you can pour liquid out easy enough um, obviously it's made out of stainless steel quite good quality it's got the little Pathfinder logo on there um, and another bug of mine about the uh, the zebra pot as well is you can't lift the lid off easily um, you, you, it's kind of indented so you have to get a stick in there or something if it's red hot whereas this it has a little uh, loop on the top there um, yeah and also the bail arm it kind of it just stays up there with the uh, zebra ones unless you have uh, made a metal clip so you can keep it in the fire the, the bail arm just swings up and down but you can put this at uh, different positions and it'll stay there also you've got a a big uh, gripping handle there I mean my hands aren't exactly massive but I can get them in there comfortably so even if you have big hands you can you can grab the pot like that but, um, I think I paid 25 quid for this which um, yeah it's not cheap like but I think that, that'll last us 10 years easily £2.50 a year you know you can't fall off so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down to the lake scoop up a bit of water and get a boiling on the fire here so at least we can get some drinking water morning guys as you can see behind there's a bit of snowfall it's actually melted it was a bit thicker last night but um, I guess it probably warmed up a little bit during the evening so um, I was a little bit worried actually last night it was fairly relentless the snow I was uh, a little bit worried about getting snowed in <laughs> um, so yeah I mean this this little spot has been great for a couple of days You've got this little cabin here which is uh it's been fantastic we kind of there is a fire pit just outside it but we've brought the snow peak just under just underneath the roof and it actually did begin to heat the uh the inside of the cabin up um so today we're definitely going to head off and try and find a campsite i think i do know that there's one opening in lofstalen over in sweden uh, we went there last year 
Uh, it's not too far away from here, it might be a three or four hour drive, but I think we're going to have to, to head there and just sort things out a bit. The condensation in the tent is getting really, really bad. The, um, I mean, the, I mentioned earlier that the sheets started to get a bit wet on the entrance where you get in and out, but it's, it's pretty much gone all the way around now. Um, we've still got about 10 or 11 days left as well. I mean, two minds whether or not to actually take the sheets out and put them in the car while we're driving to see if I can dry them a bit. But then, on the other hand, I'm thinking, well, you know what, just, just leave it and sort it out when I get home. Hi folks, so we spent the last three days at um, a couple of campsites, one up in Lofstal and so I think the last time I'd done any filming we were at the cabin, um, so we crossed the border into Sweden and went to, to Lofstal and there's a campsite there that's open all year, we went there last year, so we spent an evening there and then we headed down to um, Mora, um, we spent a couple of nights there. But the weather has been, it's, it's pretty much just rained now for three days solid. So we haven't really done much apart from sit underneath the uh, the fox wing. But on the way down to Mora, we passed a couple of um, British overlanders. There's a chap that I'm friends with on Instagram and he, you know, I guess he watches the channel, channel as well. Um, SMH in the wild. Uh, and um, I think the fellow from the Hebrides calf up in Scotland, they're all heading up to Karuna. We actually passed them on the um, on the way down to Mora. They're heading north into the cold. So yeah, it'll be a serious trip for them. So if you're watching, hello, and I hope you had a good time. And I hope it wasn't too cold. Um, so yes, so for us, we've just headed down from Mora um, along the E45 onto the E16 towards Torsby and we've just pulled off into this place here we've, we've started heading north again towards the Norwegian border and there's a, a nice huge area of uh, empty space with a lot of dirt tracks running through it so we've we've uh, found a place to camp here we've got the fire going and um, I'm gonna cook some food later on well folks what's on the menu tonight a Max Wayne Haggis cooked in the Pathfinder bush pot over the fire. That's if this haggis is actually gonna, gonna fit in there, I think. Is it? Oh, perfect. Just in case you're wondering if you're gonna buy this um, Pathfinder bush pot, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, is a McSwain haggis gonna fit in there? Um, I can confirm that it does say that. Just about fits in there. Oh, is the lid going to shut? Oh, no. No, the lid's not going to shut. Didn't think about that when they were designing this pot. Either that or McSwain didn't think about that when they were designing this haggis. But you can just rest it on top there. It's not going to click in. So yeah, don't worry about it. McSwain haggis in the Pathfinder. No problem at all.
so we've decided to spend another night here at this camping spot um, it's pretty decent the weather looks like it might be on the on the turn so we might get a bit of sunshine um, so I thought right we'll get some stuff out of the rooftop tent get it dried so I need to get some firewood but this is one hell of a damp forest <laughs> but um, I found this uh, pine here not really sure what it's going to be like but I'm going to get inside and see if it's dry enough and uh, it's a good section here which my cave is going till uh, till the evening let's have a look that looks pretty dry in there so are we going to drag it down to near near the camp and uh, process it down there So what I'm doing here, because I'm uh, trying to split some some kindling here, and we've just got like a kind of like a, a soft gravel ground. I have walked into the forest looking for a tree stump, but they're all so rotten. As soon as you stick your axe into them, they just split apart. But what you don't want to do is is to kind of be splitting stuff and then constantly hitting the the blade of your axe on the on the stones. Um, because you just end up taking chunks out of your out of your cutting edge. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just scraping away um, some of this uh, this gravel and this sand here. And I'm just going to put in half of this log that I've just split, and then that will give us just a, a bit of a safety net, just so I don't damage the the cutting edge of me give me axe too much you see So I've been mentioning that the um, sheets from the rooftop tent have been getting damp so I've kind of constructed this uh, double line drying rig here with the um, the ridge line that I use for my top. So I've got a couple of uh, lines coming up here from the uh, Foxwing awning and I'm using my one of my tripod stands, the shepherd's crook there, just to give it a bit of height. And I've got the fire going beautifully here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hang each, uh, each sheet up from out, out of the rooftop tent on each one of these, one of these lines and hopefully should be able to, to get it nice and dry. Now then folks, so we left the uh, the campsite that we stayed at for the last two nights, we left that about lunchtime and we headed um, 
westwards towards Torsby and then we've headed northwest of Torsby into this beautiful forested area. Um, the Norwegian border literally runs about 30 meters away from where we are. Um, behind the camera I can see, I can see Norway. Um, so yeah we called in at Torsby, picked up a few supplies and we just headed into this area. We only drove for about an hour and a half. So I'm just out looking for somewhere to put the old uh, trail cam uh, which so far has got absolutely nothing apart from a picture of Tris. Um, so I'll have to admit I have zero knowledge of moose habitat apart from that they live in the forests of Norway and Sweden. So I think, you know, if we're going to see one then this is where it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think this here, this area, if you can see that clear in there, to me that says a, 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 a passage for the moose. Um, sometimes I look at these forests and because a lot of them are like commercially planted forests, they're very dense. And I'm thinking there's a massive moose with like huge horns going to be trying to get through here. I don't think so. I mean, I could be wrong. Like I said, I, I don't really know what I'm talking about. But I think they're, they're going to be coming through these clearings. Um, so yeah, I'm going to find a tree. I'm going to put this up and, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get some footage of Bullwinkle mooching around in the night. So this is the tree that I've decided on. I can see right down there into the woods. But uh, it's really, really boggy getting here. It's literally like ankle deep in, in uh, moisture. I don't know if that's going to put the moose off. I mean, why would it? The living forests, forests are always wet. And I think a bit of moisture, a bit of damp under the foot is going to put them off. So um, I'm looking to capture some footage of a big moose here. Um, so what I'm going to do is put it about... They're quite big animals, aren't they? Probably... Uh, I'm going to put it there, I think. I think that's a good height. Yeah, it's got a wide angle lens in. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna strap the beast around here. Is that gonna reach there? Of course it, of course it isn't. Of course that wasn't gonna reach. So I'm gonna work my way around this tree. Oh, I'll tell you what. People go to a lot of effort to capture wild animals like this. You can see David Attenborough struggling like this, do you? He just turns up and he sees them straight up with. Well, the rest of us, right. There we go. So, uh, that's, that's gonna be nice and tight, I think, yep. So if I keep it about there, tighten that up, just tuck the cord around the back here, just so the moose doesn't click on. See I don't want the moose to come through here and think like, oh there's a camera. <laughs> Not stupid you know. So there we have it there. So I'm just going to turn that on now. And get out of the way and uh, yeah put it there I think actually so I'm gonna turn this on it's gonna be getting dark soon so that is on there now Right, hopefully we should uh, capture some uh, wildlife. Yeah, I'm just gonna go and get the camera now. <clears throat> So I'll just have a quick look. 
I don't really think I've uh, I've got anything here in mind. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just must have accidentally triggered it off when I was uh, putting it on. Yeah, so, oh well, never mind. Let me try again tonight. Well folks, um, this is our last wild camp of the trip. So we packed up this morning and we were we were in uh, Sweden, um, camped right next to the border with Norway. So we crossed into Norway um, and then back into Sweden, then back into Norway. It's just the way the road was taking us. And we kind of um, headed uh, northwest up around Oslo and then we've headed north a little bit just to try and get away from the um, the urban sprawl and the populations around Oslo um, so we've ended up uh, here which <laughs> is just another old forestry track and a big um, a big turn and circle here so so yeah I'm just gonna enjoy this last wild camp I've got a few Norlands gold uh, in the back of the truck so uh, I'll not put them in the fridge like because I think it'll be warmer outside the fridge tonight but um yeah, I better crack on actually, get this uh, firewood sorted. Well folks, it's, uh, it's, it's time for us to head off. This is our, our last wild camp of the trip. Um, it's been a good one, but uh, we're off to stay in a hut tonight. Bit of luxury, well, rather than luxury. You know, like you, you know, you've had it hard when you're looking forward to sleeping in a wooden shed. But um, yeah, it's been a it's been a great trip. It's just a bit sad when you reach the uh, the moment when you're driving away from your last wild camp because that's where the trip really, you know, comes to an end. But um, you know, it's always next year. Another trip, Scandinavia, probably going to be in the pipeline I reckon, but uh, we'll see. Well folks, um, pretty much the end of the trip now, it's been a fairly enjoyable um, few weeks. Uh, this time around we, um, we didn't really do too much driving, you know, we kept the driving to a minimum. Uh, we've spent a few days put in the same place, um, getting the campfire going, practicing our bushcraft skills and all that kind of stuff, getting some hikes in. So it's been a, it's been a bit of a different trip in comparison to our last two Scandinavian journeys where we kind of we had a destination in mind and we actually probably spent too many hours um, behind the wheel but uh, I think we've got a good balance on this trip 
so yeah it's been enjoyable i guess uh, well i guess this is the end so um as ever i'd just like to say thanks for watching and i'll see you again in the next one